Ben. Uh, Sam, we'll start with the news this week about Gilfie Sigurdsson uh, out for a number of weeks now. How much of a blow is that to you between now and the end of the season? Uh, I think every every player you uh, would want to play in the first team on a regular basis and obviously being a big signing for Everton is a blow and uh, it's, a, it's an unfortunate trauma injury. I think that you as a, as a manager and your backroom staff are require a prevent injury policy for covering off the fact that we don't want too many players injured that we can avoid but when you can't avoid an injury like this then you have to look at the recovery time and hopefully Gilfie's recovery time can be shorter than maybe we might expect I think that always medical and and uh, specialists give a, a conservative view and you try and beat that and um, See if you can get Gilfie back as long as you can, and along with James McCarthy, who broke his leg, and then Mangala, who did his knee. It's been a, I think it's been a tough time all year, you know, with uh, uh, with injuries, and uh, and that has certainly had an effect, perhaps, on away performances and away results. Certainly not at home, because our own form and our points per game ratio is uh, up in the top three. Uh, certainly in the last eight or ten games and in fact certainly in the last four games all our points have come at home all ten out of twelve so we're very very good at home running high high in the Premier League for points gained at home but away form is the is the um, one we certainly have to improve and make sure we pick up some points away starting at Stoke On Sigurdsson the time frame is as long as eight weeks. Um, How do you know? Well, according to your statement in the week. Well, um, somebody gave out the wrong statement then. <laughs> <laughs> so, could it be less than yeah, that? I so mean, my question was it, going to be... It, it, can be, it, can be it can be less than that, yeah. So whoever gave that statement out is going to get a bollocking <laughs> today. So, uh, <laughs> well done. <laughs> you just got the... Whoever gave that one out, right, right telling off like you mean, because you cannot predict a length of injury in its entirety because... You have people who heal quicker, and uh, we we have um, a highly qualified medical staff and uh, equipment to try and speed up any injury. And uh, I've I've always felt it the wrong thing to do to ta to tag an injury for its time and its time limits because people recover quicker than others, and uh, and then you you don't, you want to avoid setbacks if so they don't reach that time then. And it's more why is it? And if you can get it before then, then you know you've, you've perhaps done well. But for me, it's how is it? How is it in the next two weeks? And you know what does it look like in the next two weeks when you sustained an injury immediately after there? There's a settling down period, and then there's how how quick the player recovers. And Gilfie's motivation is obviously to get back playing for us, and and obviously playing for Iceland in the World Cup. Does it mean we're likely to see Wayne Rooney play more then as a number 10? Um, who knows? I think he's played a, a number 10 role pretty pretty much in, in a 4-3-3 before the role he played. He played the role on Saturday for the first time, which was his, which he took over from Ghana, who was ill, um, and and sat in that position and produced a, produced a top quality performance. But we've seen all... All our performances at home at the at the, at the highest level, um, particularly since I, I've been here and the points that we've gained. Um, probably the only performance that wasn't that good was probably West Brom, and we managed to get points out of that. But all the rest have been exceptionally good, and uh, and we've won those games. Like I said, 12, 12 points out of the last four games has has been um, our mainstay of. Uh, of where we are in the league, but our home form uh, is a Jekyll and Hyde, if you like. We need to improve it, and we need to start on Saturday. With Rooney dropping into that deeper role for the last game, how impressed with you were you with what he brought to that position? And could he play that way going forward? Well, I think that um, I think we have a number of players that like that position themselves, like you mean. So I think that there's players who, you know, have played that position for. For many many seasons, but if we certainly know now, if needed, that he's he's more than capable. Like you know, so I think the overall scenario is everybody to emulate a 
a level of performance away from home as they've they've shown at home. I think that's been our our problem that the 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 players haven't hit that that peak or that peak performance that they they have done when they've played at home and then and then when they've been in a position to get a result, particularly in the last two away games, have slipped up. Um, and have ended up with no points at all, and that's really disappointing, not just for us, but all the Everton fans that travel away from home, because obviously they're there in the numbers, they sell their ticket allocation out, and we want to get them as happy when they're travelling back as we, we get the fans at home as happy as they were last week when we beat Brighton. You've been linked with a move for Jack Wilshire, who's out of contract in the summer, no shortage of clubs, I'm sure, looking at him, but... Is that the sort of player that you'd like to bring in in the middle to move the ball, who's capable of building a tempo? Next season is next season. I think that uh, our our main aim is is to have the the right discussions at the right period of time um, when we can. I think that when you're li living in a, with a squad of uh, 38 professionals, then we certainly know that adding adding more players can only come about releasing some and moving some on. I think that the, the balance of ins and outs uh, in the summer will be and will determine on who and what we bring in. I don't think there's any doubt about that. How much of a role then are you playing in recruitment for next season at this point? I'm focusing on the first team and the first team winning. I think that's that's um, the first thing we do. And then there's a there's a there's achieving the safety mark, which we're very close to now. Achieved in the safety mark on on our secured position in the Premier League, and then and then having those discussions and and moving forward when when that happens, really, as well as planning most of pre-season, which is penciled in, if you like. Big news last night was that Mark Hughes has taken over at Southampton as they're looking to avoid the drop. How big a challenge is that going into a club with eight games to go to try and survive and as you say, get to that safety line? Uh, I think that uh, ex Mark's experience in, in, the, in the Premier League would be very important for Southampton and hopefully they, they would hope that there would be a reaction to him walking through the door and, and giving the players a, a new direction. I think that we all try and do that when we come into a club that's struggling. Um, and I think that uh, that direction is, needs to be instant. You know, and uh, we moved ourselves out of a relegation position very quickly um, when I arrived, and uh, that gave us uh, gave us a lot of confidence. But obviously, then you've got to sustain it, and we haven't. We've managed to sustain it home, no problem. But what we haven't to sustain is is the ongoing problem with the last two and a half, well, two C, two years and three months of Everton away results not being good enough. And. Finally then, uh, you were at the Manchester United game on Tuesday. Um, what did you make of their performance and obviously English clubs' performance in the Champions League in general this week? Well, I went to watch a couple of players from Seville and I think that uh, I think that obviously Manchester United and its fans were very disappointed on the night, not, not just with the result, but the fact that they didn't apply enough pressure against Seville. I think everybody expected... And you've got such a big expectation at Man United that they were going to get through after the nil-nil draw at their place. But unfortunately, missing your chances at key moments at that level it was was costly. Um, so it was a very disappointing night for the Man United fans. So I understand you don't want to put a time frame on Skilfi Sigurdsson, but the time that he is out, how much of an opportunity could it provide for Davy Clarkson? It may do. I think that um, it's been a been a, a struggle for Davy since he arrived. I think that, and there's been a struggle since I've been here. But I mean, I think that um, when he gets an opportunity, and if he gets an opportunity, like all players, uh, the players at home who've got an opportunity have done very, very well. Sometimes the players away from home have not lived up to the expectation. I think so. But he's been in the squad and um, he managed a brief appearance and. If he does get the opportunity, hopefully he will shine and show what he achieved at Ajax. But uh, you know, at the moment we've got uh, a squad of players that are hopefully eager and looking forward to the game against Stoke. How much have you spoken to him about the struggle that he's had to establish himself here? I think a few times. I think that the the, the end of the day, it's not just it's not just uh, David. It's uh, that's 
that's cl struggled in his first season in the Premier League, like many players that arrive in this country, that the first year can be the, ver the very, very hardest for them. And then once they've actually had the first season under the belt and uh, they come in for a new season, the season after them, and they know what it's all about and they felt the disappointment of not performing to the level that they, they wanted to or we expected, then they've got a big opportunity to then show what they're made of and why we brought them to the club, which is an ongoing focus on everybody and an ongoing pressure on every manager and every player that, that's brought to a new football club, particularly in today's prices. The expectation starts right from the very beginning and uh, and sometimes that's very difficult to uh, achieve your best performances in, in, a, in a season where you've arrived in a new culture a new environment and a new league and the best league in the world, as it were. What have you made of the job that Paul Lambert's doing at Stoke so far? Well, it's made him very difficult to beat now. I think that, uh, like us all, that you know, the, the basis of, of winning football matches is, is hard, being hard to break down. I think that uh, um, f for, for us, we looked at the, the fact that we've slipped up by not achieving as many clean sheets as we should have done, and we'd done that, we'd have picked up more points. He's working on the same lines and then in possession they're trying to use the new players that they've brought in to, to be a bit more creative. How key is Jun and Shakiri for them? Well he's the key player from an assist I think and the, and, and the, the goals that he scores I think that we'd, we'd need to keep a close watch on him on Saturday and try to keep him as quiet as possible. One of their key, key men to uh, try and mark out the game if we can. Hi Sam, um, you're, you're known to be innovative and, and try different things. So, have you tried anything different to try? You know, with this away record, do anything different this week, or looked at anything differently? Uh, well, we've tried some. We've tried a number of things. I think that uh, I think that um, systems change the systems, change the personnel. I think the change of mentality is the big one. Like you mean, so. We've been using a bit more uh, work into the mind at the in the analysis room about you know who we are, what do we want to get, and what do we want to achieve. Like I mean, I think that 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 is the main aim is the focus of you know being mindfulness in terms of visualizing it, your performance and uh, and visualizing the performance that you give at the top level and uh, thinking about that to put yourself in a positive frame of mind before you walk out or run onto the field on a Saturday. I think that all your preparation tactically and technically is fine, but if the player spends a little bit of time thinking about his best performance and putting himself in the right frame of mind, then that best performance will have a better chance of being delivered. Just sorry, quick follow up. Are the players getting help with that then, you know, like sports psychology or anything like that, or are you just putting it on them? They are, they are getting some help with that, yes. I think that... Uh, We've used our in-house sports psychologist that had been here for for quite some while. So s slowly, he's integrated himself with some of the sessions with the players. Okay, guys, thank you.